Good day, YouTube. Warble's on a lot here with yet another attempt to uh, make the second part of my response to Adam Shumpus XXX's radio podcast. <coughs> um, I think at some point in there, Adam, you said that if you know your next door neighbour's got a gun, it makes you more polite to him. Ah, uh, no. Not really. I know my next door neighbours have got guns, and it doesn't make me any more polite to them. In fact, sometimes it makes me less polite. Because they don't want the social stigma of losing their temper in an argument and pulling their hunting rifle on an unarmed man. And all of the bad karma consequences that makes their life unravel when that happens. So, yeah, sometimes the fact that they've got guns and I don't have a gun means that I'm a little bit more rude. Like, quarter to midnight when you see a bright light on the horizon, you get your telephoto camera and you go out there stalking the spotlight shooters. And uh, well, it was very interesting how many people around the world were horrified at the idea of... of civilians roam in the landscape with spotlights and high-powered rifles to shoot at feral animals. Um, you know, I got to go on YouTube as the tree-hugging greenie who goes stalking the spotlight shooters. They got to look like the wicked, nasty, evil people who shoot Bambi. Um, but the bloke in Canada who really surprised me, 101, he's a gun owner and he, he's a sporting shooter and all the rest of it left a very brief comment to the effect that in Canada it's against the law to kill any animal by shooting at it when it's in a spotlight. So uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but the things you see when you haven't got a gun are generally more interesting than the things you see when you have got a gun, because when you haven't got a gun, you're not constantly solving the bullet drop deflection windage equation, and you're not in terms of other people looking for an excuse to draw on them. Whereas if you put your faith in your firing arm, and you put your faith in the idea that you're going to hide a cubic foot of vital meat behind a quarter of a square inch that the bullet comes out, you're going to use the muzzle as your small circular shield, or what the Scottish call a target. And a target is a, a thing a Scotsman hides behind, and a target is a thing an Englishman aims at. So as soon as you carry a gun to hide behind the muzzle, you make yourself a target, which is kind of what I proved in the one of the final stories in the first part of this little response. If you postulate that the people who've got the guns are going to rely on military intelligence and type of analysis, then when City Zen A sees City Zen B, who lives across the road, take a 22 caliber P rifle out of his car because Cities NB has a plan to teach his kid to plink rabbits on a Saturday afternoon. Cities NA applying military intelligence threat analysis logic decides that a 22 caliber rifle has ammunition labeled on the box as dangerous at a mile. He lives only 75 yards away. What if he gets cranky when my dog shits on his lawn? What if when he's cranky he comes over here and starts threatening me with his gun that's got bullets dangerous at a mile? I think I'd better go down to the shop and get myself a Winchester 3030 or something that's got bigger bullets, fatter bullets, heavier bullets, more powerful bullets, bullets that are dangerous at three miles. Then I'll have him outgunned. That's what happens when people who employ military intelligence threat analysis see their neighbour has got a gun. They go and buy a bigger one for themselves. And if the neighbour's got the same disease, before you know it, they've got fucking 25-pound howitzers in their backyards, just in case. Okay? Quad-barrel anti-aircraft cannons. And there are people in the excited states of Norte Americano who have such things. Okay? If you go onto my faves, and go right back to the start when I first got on YouTube, one of my faves is a movie called 2006 Machine Gun Shoot. You go and have a look at that. There's a bloke in Virginia who's got a quad barrel 50 calibre anti-aircraft set up. Some people are very paranoid. They spend a lot of time exercising their paranoid fantasies and polishing the gun is, is one way to do it. And there's a, a school of feminist 
thought which suggests that all chemical ballistic firearms are penis extenders. Maybe they go as far as saying bows and arrows are as well, spears, woomeras. Um, but the design of handguns lends itself to such an analysis. You know, you take your 45 calibre automatic Colt pistol, you know, designed for shooting religiously crazed Filipinos who are running wild with a machete at a party. You could empty your 32 or 38 revolver in them and they'd keep coming and chop your bloody head off. So, in about 1909, the American army put in a request for something that would stop these crazy Filipinos, and they come up with the M911, and, and 1911, sorry. It'll blow such a big hole in the other side of the crazy Filipino coming at you with his knife that his brain is not connected to his pelvis anymore because big bits of his spine are missing. Right? That's what that weapon was designed to do. And if you sell those things to a population who's been raised on Hollywood television versions of gun violence, where firearms are sort of magic death rays that the good guys always hit precisely what they're aiming at, the bad guys generally miss, and uh, you can be shot three times in the chest with a 45 caliber automatic Colt and you'll get three little red strawberry marks on your shirt and you'll make a extended deathbed confession and then you'll have a small trail of blood run down the corner of your mouth and you'll die neatly on the TV screen or on the, the silver screen in the picture theater In the excited states of Norte Americano, there's a gun-loving, allegedly God-fearing culture which somehow manages to regard the God they say they love as being a powerless infant. They don't get up in the morning and say, oh, well, the sun's still in the sky the hydrogen fusion reaction still happening. The God theory seems to know what it's doing, so I guess I'll have a safe day. Oh no. The allegedly God-fearing, gun-toting Norte Americanos wake up in the morning and they say, well, my God's a fucking idiot. Anything could happen to me. Bad people might be planning horrible things, so therefore I better have my firearm fantasy. So you've got this projector of the seeds of death to disseminate the seeds of death. The feminists would say it's a penis extender, it's a psychological penis extender. People who are into semi-automatics and automatic. The paperwork to get a firearm in Australia is pretty tricky. If you say you want the firearm for personal protection rather than for shooting at rabbits or shooting at targets or for purposes of collecting, for you know military historical purposes, if you tick the box on the form, I want this gun for personal protection, that's reason to be disqualified from having a firearm because you've obviously got the short circuit in your head where you think you live in such a violent society that the police are not capable of keeping you safe. They may not necessarily keep you safe by preventing anybody who ever had a violent fantasy from doing anything bad. They keep you safe by ensuring that everybody understands that no matter what you think you're going to get away with, you will get caught. Right? And the same people understand that. The people who choose to break the law do so in the firm belief that the law doesn't apply to them and that they are too clever for the police forces and they are never going to get caught, which is why political movements aimed at repressing crime by increasing the penalties, the sentences, they're doomed to failure because nobody ever says, oh, I'm going to commit murder and I'm going to get caught, so therefore I'm only going to go to jail for so many times. Yeah, well, I only know of one case of somebody that I saw with my own eyes who decided that he could kill his wife instead of divorcing her and then he could say that she nagged him into it and it wasn't going to be his fault and he figured he'd get a five-year head sentence for manslaughter with reduced responsibility and be out on parole in two years. 
<coughs> he and I used to line up at the local courthouse, and both our wives had similar stories. He said, according to his wife, that he was going to shoot her and do all that, and my wife reckoned I was going to do the similar thing and put her at the bottom of five post holes. And uh, my wife said that I had said that. I had actually recounted to her a conversation where my father told me about somebody who had been caught five years after he put his wife at the bottom of some post holes. And I'd recounted the conversation to illustrate the point that no matter how clever you think you are, you always get caught for doing bad shit. Like Chaucer said, Modre will out. It's the theme of the nun's priest's tale in the Canterbury Tales, which was the first fiction novel printed in English. A hell of a lot of it comes from Boccaccio's Decameron, but yeah, that's Modre will out, murder will out. You can't ever get away with it. So if you've got a grasp of the cosmic scoreboard effect or the karma laws or the fact that murderers always get caught, lawbreakers always get caught, you never ever get away with it. It becomes simpler and cheaper to just put your faith in the karma laws or in the creator of the universe as I do. Um, it beats the shit out of constantly solving the bullet drop windage deflection equation and, and carrying a loaded weapon 24 hours a day so that I can be in a position to shoot somebody if they should choose to threaten me. I'd rather just ignore all that paranoia. If somebody is going to shoot me, they'll, you know, plink me in the headlights while I'm opening the front gate. Surely. Nobody can be more vulnerable than in the middle of nowhere opening a gate. But I would expect that the creator of the universe, thinking that I'm on balance not a horrible thing, might get them to trip and shoot himself in the foot while they were walking to their ambush position. Something like that. I trust the Creator to keep me safe because I don't think I'm a terrible bad thing in the universe. Okay, only a couple of minutes left. Anarchist's cookbook, you mentioned that. It's a friggin' joke, mate. Um, it's designed to draw curious, cranky teenagers in and provide their ISP locations to surveillance authorities. My son got a copy on a disc which he burnt from one that a policeman's son had downloaded on his father's computer at work. One officer station. And uh, I caught my son looking at it and I made him print it out for me so I could check it. Chalk is not carbon carbonate, right? That's the level of mistakes that are built into the anarchist cookbook. Load of shit. You mentioned old mate that the Batman shoot him up thing in Colorado was wearing body armour. Anybody who wears body armour is asking to be shot in the face, mate. Didn't you know that? That's what it's for. I think if you visualise a society where a significant number of people, say 30%, have concealed carry permits for firearms, you are advocating a council of despair, you are suggesting that the police force is not capable of keeping you safe and maintaining a safe environment, and therefore you want instant vigilantes to leap to conclusions and run out of ideas and shoot whoever they think might be doing the wrong thing. And Historically, it's turned out to be a bad idea, you know. Um, Beirut, Somalia, Afghanistan, Pakistani northwest frontier, you know, places where people carry guns as part of their manhood, you know. We're back to the psychological firearm theory, aren't we? On the topic of government documentation of firearms in Australia, the government's list of who keeps what firearm where appears to have been hacked, and there's been a string of burglaries in East Coast Australia of people who own six or more firearms. The burglars have got a list of who's got what where. Ha ha. On the topic of ex-military large magazine weapons, if I'm going to be shot at by somebody, I'd rather they use an ex-military semi or fully automatic firing ex-military ammunition because full metal jackets are designed not to kill you, right? A bloke in Australia called Leonard Liebeter went off his head with a 243 with a scope. He fired three shots, three hits, three kills. Versus the nutcase with the SKS in the Strathfield Shopping Centre, 60 rounds, 15 hits, seven kills including himself. 
Full circle, Adam, back to the burglary. Nobody brings an AK-47 while they're trying to do a burglary on a house. And if they are spraying 30 rounds everywhere, headshot. One hit, one shot, one kill. And then you can talk to their midnight visitor every night for at least the next seven years. Ciao.